Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 Blueprints Creation Series and in today's episode we're going to be showing you how to create a simple little health pickup just like this. So what it is, is it's essentially just a little crate here and when the player actually walks over it, it's going to give him a little health boost. So I'm going to show you exactly what it does. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and run over it. You're going to see it does nothing at the moment because I've already got full health. However, if I was to reduce my health some way, just like that, and now run over it, you're going to see it's going to explode and it's going to increase my health a little bit. And that value can be set, it's not going to be just 25 as you saw in the first one, it's going to be 25 each time, just like that, so it goes up to 50, 75, and then 100, just like that. Now it's a very simple system and you can set it up however you want. Um, but there is one requirement for this video, you're going to need to have some kind of health system in place. Um, if you want to figure out how you can create a health system and health bar and all that cool stuff, I do advise that you go ahead and check out the videos using the annotations for the health system. That's essentially just a variable for the player and that's going to be the health going from 0 to 100 and then we just have some conditioning every check uh, every tick to check whether or not it's below 100 if it's below 100 it just you know gets rid of it um, but then we also have a health bar system to you know display that health so make sure you do check out those and it should look exactly how it does on my screen now anyway so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up and see exactly how we've done it um, so the first thing you need to see is it's basically using a begin overlap event So whenever you touch this little object, it's going to cast to the third person character Which is going to allow us to you know play around with some of the third person character variables or whatever your character blueprint is And we're going to be able to use that to check whether or not he's got a certain amount of health already If he does if he doesn't if it's true for us if it's less than 75 it's going to set the player health to, you know, plus 25 to create the effect of actually, you know, getting the little health boost. And then after that, we just spawn an emitter and destroy the actor. Now, this conditioning is very simple. It's a very easy way to do it. It's going to be entirely up to you. You can do it for your game, no matter how you want. If you wanted to, you could set up, um, you know, if it's less than, if it's nine, less than or equal to 100. Um, you know, it does nothing or 99 and then it just does just takes the rest off afterwards. It's you know, it's entirely up to you um, But this is just pretty much the system in its most simple form in a way that hopefully you can understand and follow along So let's go ahead and dive in and get creating it So the first thing you want to do is create a blueprint class as this blueprint class is going to contain all the different components required your box collision, your object, and then all your script attached. Now, remember with blueprint classes, you can add loads of these little objects into the scene. They're all going to be separate, they can all work individually, and when you destroy one, it's not going to destroy all of them. So it's, it's best to do it this way. So we're just going to call this blueprint class health object. We're going to go ahead and open that up, and we're going to add in a few components. The first component we're going to add is a cube. This is just so we can actually see the object. Now you could create a custom mesh for this if you wanted to, but for now I'm just going to leave it at a cube and I'm going to go ahead and apply this little crate material, uh, this little health crate material that I made. If you want a link to the health material, uh, health crate material, you can find it in the description down below. I have uh, textures for diffuse normal and your emissive maps and you can create you know something like this it's kind of cool but once again it's entirely up to you you might want to create something custom for your game so we've got the looks of the object now if we go ahead and drag it into the scene we can see it it's a little bit too big so you might want to scale it down just a little bit let's go ahead and do that it's very simple as soon as we get it here you go there you go, just scale it down just a little bit. But the next thing we need to do is add in a box collision so we can actually detect whether or not, um, you know, whether or not the player is in the rate is within the area. And when he begins overlapping with this box collision, we can fire off all of our script and stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. So we got our box collision. Just name this whatever you want. I'm just going to call this collision box for now. And then we're going to go over to the event graph. And let's go ahead and do a begin overlap event. To do that, just drag in the collision box, go to uh, on component begin overlap, 
and we'll have this little event here. Just get rid of the other reference to collision box. So from this, we need to do a few things. The first thing we need to do is cast to the player character or wherever the health variable is uh, stored. In this, in this case, it's the third person character and do it just like that. And under the object wildcard, just go ahead and add uh, and add that to get player character. So now we should be able to actually communicate with the third person character blueprint. So if we wanted to, we could set the player health or we could use it to get a reference to it and then use conditioning and set all of that up. But for now, let's just go ahead and do this. Let's just go ahead and get a reference to the player health. Get player health. Now, your player health variable might be called something else uh, and it might also be stored somewhere else. Just keep that in mind. It's entirely down to the way that you set up your system. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a branch. This branch is essentially going to check whether or not a value is true or false. That value can come from a whole bunch of different things. For us, we're just going to check whether or not it's less than or equal to 75. The reason why we're doing this is because we don't want the, you, you know, we don't want you to be able to pick up the object if the health is already more than 75. If it is more than 75, it's going to go over 100. Uh, so we're just going to leave it at that for now. Like I said, if you wanted to, you can set your conditioning system up any way you want to, but I'm just going to do it in the most simple way possible, uh, just like this. So drag out condition to integer less than or equal to. So if it's less than or equal to 75, it's going to return true. So let's go ahead and hook up a to, you know, the player health variable and set the B to 75. So that should all work now. If it's false, we don't want it to do anything. We just want it to stay in place. Whereas true, we want to start changing that health variable. We want it to explode and then we want it to destroy the actor. It's very simple to do, but let's go ahead and show you how you can do it. So let's get another reference. Well, not yeah, another reference to the player health variable. So just drag it out. But this time, instead of using get, we're going to use set. This set is going to allow us to change the player health variable directly from this new blueprint class and we can change it to whatever we want. So I'm going to drag out player health and I'm going to type in integer plus integer. So this is going to allow me to use A for player health and then B is to the value that we want it to set to. We're using plus because we want to add some extra health. In this case, we want to add 25. So go ahead and put 25 into the B. So if we press compile and then close that and then we press play, if we were to walk into this little box here, it's not going to do anything because we've already got enough health. If we were to lower our health, you can see when we now collide with it, it increases our health. But we still need to get rid of the object, so it can't be used more than once. That's quite simple. All we got to do is just use the destroy actor. There you go, just destroy actor, and then it will disappear once we've actually touched it. Now, if you wanted to, you could also put a emitter, a little explosion effect inside of this. It's quite simple, just spawn an emitter and just put it between the set health and the destroy. Don't put your spawn effect after the destroy as you can't guarantee it will always spawn because you know the script will have already stopped, the object has gone and all that cool stuff. Anyway, so not spawn effect, sorry, it's spawn emitter. Just make sure you got that right. So spawn emitter at a location, just like this. And we're just going to hook up the explosion for now. And as for the location, we're just going to drag it out to get actor location. So that's going to get the location of the little box. And now that should happen between destroying the actor and setting the health. So we go ahead and press compile, play. And now if we run into this little box, nothing happens. If I have lower health, you know, to, so the conditioning works and I jump into it, it explodes and it destroys itself and it can't be used again. Anyway, hopefully you should have a better understanding of how we can play around with the player health from external classes and you should be able to create some cool stuff with this. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you in this tutorial. Play around with it, let me know what you come up with and yeah, comment, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.